Hello and welcome to your daily crypto news. So before we go any further, make sure you are a subscriber to our channel so you can enter our contest. I'll pop the details behind me. Uh, don't forget to smash that like button for us. Now let's go ahead and jump in. So we are looking at market app right now at $350 billion. It has gone up definitely over the last 24 hours, uh, about $20 billion. So that is great news. Uh, the Bitcoin dominance has also fallen uh, below 38, so it's at 37.5 right now. Bitcoin is hovering around 7,700. It's been there most of the day today, so a 1% increase. Uh, most things are up today. IOTA is down a little bit. Uh, EOS is down a little bit. I think that number will drop some more. There's just more and more news coming out about EOS that uh, th there may be some sketchy things going on with it. Not to say it's a scam. I read an article about how only 10 addresses hold 50% of all EOS. Uh, so that was a little troubling to me, of course, yesterday with... Uh, I know we talked about an article that said that uh, maybe the EOS pump had to do with people not being able to withdraw their money. Now there's all kinds of rumors about uh, the uh, just manipulation for the EOS pump and that it was a fake pump completely. So it's just very interesting to see what is going to happen. Uh, I, I think over the next month, I think we're going to see the price of EOS maybe not go down, but go down in Satoshi value. So let's look at the biggest winners of the day. Huobi token is up. Uh, which is a quite large exchange. If you don't know about Huobi, I was talking to somebody recently who hadn't even heard of it, and I think it's the fifth largest exchange. Uh, you can check that. Of course, it's changing every day, uh, the rankings on those. VeChain up 11%. Bitcoin Cash is up. Lisk, Zilliqa, Made Safe Coin. Made Safe Coin continues to climb. It has been one of the most consistent gainers over the last few weeks. So biggest losers of the day, uh, Veritasium and Moac, the only ones over a 5% loss. And really, there's not that many losers today. It looks like about 20, but most of them are in the 0 to 2% range. So, you know, not too bad. So let's look at Cubic for just a second. So we reported on Cubic about probably a month ago when the details of this project were released. It was previously called Project Q. It is associated with IOTA, and it's a very interesting uh, project here. It works on what's called Oracle machines. And we've been talking about these machines or oracles. They can be called many different things. There's many different variations of what an oracle is. Basically, an oracle is a communicator, is a translator. It's communicating from one blockchain to something off of the blockchain. It may be another blockchain or it may be some data that's floating out there that isn't even on blockchain right now. So I think this is a very interesting project, but this is one to keep your eye on because as you guys know, I'm very bullish on IOTA. And I think that uh, the this protocol working with IOTA, that it has potential to do something big. So you guys make sure you're watching out for this one, not financial advice. So Zencash. Zencash was recently hit by a 51% attack. So the Zencash network was a target of a 51% attack on June 2nd at approximately 10.43 p.m. The Zencash team immediately executed mitigation procedures to significantly increase the difficulty of future attacks on the network. Uh, you can read the full article down in the video information below. But the whole point is here is you got to be careful out there. There are a lot of hackers. And, you know, just more to my point about how, you know, the visa outage in Europe, it, it didn't seem as big of a deal to me uh, because, you know, some of these networks are still uh, vulnerable to hacking. And so until so we can get that problem figured out, which I think there are solutions to, uh, you know, I think we're going to continue to not see adoption because Visa can go out and it's an outage and people are upset about that. But what if Visa got hacked, which is also possible. But if it got hacked, uh, you know, and the network went down because of that, it would have been a much bigger story. But yeah, we still have plenty of cryptocurrencies such as Verge uh, getting hacked. So it does continue to happen. So kind of along those same lines, uh, Tron is announcing a bug bounty program with a $100,000 top reward. Uh, it says that Justin Sun said, calling all developers, Tron mainnet is live on GitHub and we're offering 
up to $100,000 in bug bounty rewards. Bring your A-game, stated son, in the announcement. So Tron is looking for people to try to exploit their software and then let them know about it so they can fix it. So I thought that was pretty cool that they're doing that and offering such a big bounty for it. Of course, $100,000 to Justin Sun is probably not very much. But to your average person out there trying to find bugs, uh, you know, it's a, it's a fairly large amount of money or a very large amount of money to most. So Walton Chain invited to the Great Hall of the People for China Blockchain Technology, Innovation, and Development Forum. Uh, so I, I don't really necessarily want to talk about what happened at this forum or them being invited to it. What I want to say is I want to walk back some things I've said about Walton Chain in the past. I've said about Walton Chain, and we can go back to the snafu regarding the uh, giveaway where they, where someone from their team accidentally tweeted uh, from the official Walton Chain Twitter account uh, it sounded like a personal message, like, oh, so glad I won this contest. And it made it seem like the whole contest was fake. Maybe the whole thing wasn't. They came out later and said, uh, you know, oh, it was one of our employees. They actually did win. They just forgot to log out of our main account, which the whole thing was just really sketchy. And even before that, there's been things that Walton Chain has said, uh, you know, that they have a partnership coming up. And then, you know, the partnership wasn't actually official yet. That has definitely happened in the past. Uh, so, I have previously said that the Walton Chain marketing team has not been good. It's been the weakest point of this project. Well, I would like to say over the last couple months, I've seen a real change in their marketing. It seems like they're getting out. They're getting out and about. They're at all kinds of conferences. And I think they've really made a lot of progress on this front. So hopefully when the next bull run comes around, Walton Chain will be one that will get a lot of publicity because we've said before, we really like Walton Chain. I like what they're doing. I love the RFID tracking on the supply chain. Makes so much sense to me. Uh, you know, China obviously exports a lot of goods, so it's a Chinese project. I'm really bullish on Walton Chain, and I think that their marketing team has really turned things around. I think that the fake giveaway thing was really an eye-opener for them, so good job, Walton Chain. So let's take a quick look at Quantum. So Quantum uh, is in the top 20 on CoinMarketCap, but it's one I don't really know about. So I found this article that really sums it up in two paragraphs. So I just want to share this with you guys because I think this is a project that probably a lot of people don't know about. It's one of those under the radar top 20s. So Quantum is a smart contract blockchain that's currently being developed by a team in Shanghai. At a high level, Quantum is a proof of stake blockchain that uses the Ethereum virtual machine for its smart contract virtual machine. The quantum settlement layer, which manages transactions and calculates balances, uses Bitcoin's UTXO model. Uh, Q Quantum's blockchain is live and currently has almost 7,000 unique nodes around the world participating in proof of stake. Additionally, several companies like Metablock and Space Chain are building dApps and contributing to the quantum development ecosystem. Quantum's near-term roadmap includes an initiative to replace the EVM with an x86 VM. Not only would that be more efficient, but it also allows smart contracts to be developed in any language that supports the x86 assembly language. Not really sure what that technical uh, coding jargon means. I don't know what x86 is. I think probably most of you aren't going to know what that is. But that's a little rundown of what Quantum is. And let's just take a look at it on CoinMarketCap right now. Like I said, it's coming in at number 19. Has a market cap of $1.3 billion. Circulating supply is $86 million, And the total supply is $100 million. The supply is a pretty good number. Uh, it's been around on CoinMarketCap since June of last year. So we pull it up and look at the crash. And pretty much since the middle of March, it's been on... It looks like almost straight sideways action. It looks like that last little hill on a roller coaster where you know it's over, but you're like, ah. But that was a mini coin review on Quantum, so just showed you the numbers, basically what it is. Now, if you're interested in this project, is it a top 20 project? Take it, go do your own research, and figure out if you like this project or not. So it's always cool to me when I've got top 20 projects I don't really know about because uh, it just shows me how much more even I still have to learn about cryptocurrency and all the different projects out there. So uh, bullish Bitcoin ads projected to 330,000 daily visitors in New York, uh, in Times Square, in New York, in New York City. Uh, I really particularly like this one, No Coiner. Gosh, I can't stand No Coiners. Ugh. But uh, anyways, th that's the reason why the market cap isn't good. Come on, No Coiner. Come on in. We want to see that market cap go up. But uh, in Times Square, these are ads, and 330,000 people are seeing them per day. I think that's really cool. Hopefully, people are starting to pick up on it. Of course, the other one said HODL, uh, which you know is heavily entrenched in the lingo of uh, cryptocurrency. So hopefully, more, we're going to see more of this. I've, I've thought to myself, why do we not see billboards in other places, like on interstates? So I think that is something that uh, you know we definitely need to move toward. Microsoft is reportedly talking about buying GitHub, a platform for software developers. We all know what GitHub is. 
But uh, so Microsoft is looking into buying this. And I think that this is absolutely huge news. Apparently in the past, they've also considered buying it. Uh, in 2015, they put a price tag on it of $2 billion. Of course, cryptocurrency has made GitHub explode even more. So the asking price is probably going to be somewhere around uh, $5 billion. So let's put that into perspective. In the NFL, if you're American, uh, obviously NFL is king here. Uh, and the value of the Carolina Panthers that were just bought and sold was a, a record number for an NFL team was $2.2 billion. And GitHub possibly is going to get $5 billion. That blows my mind, uh, especially considering your average person has not even heard of it. Uh, of course, if you're in cryptocurrency, you know that's where a lot of the white papers are and a lot of the projects start out. Uh, so, you know, I think that for us, it's part of what we talk about. But for your average person, they have no idea how, you know, what it is. And they're putting a value of $5 billion. So it'll be very interesting to see if Microsoft buys this and then what kind of stake Microsoft puts into cryptocurrency. So the more legitimate companies come into the space, which if you buy GitHub, you are coming into the space. Uh, I think that's really bullish news for cryptocurrency. So that's all I got for you today. That is your Sunday crypto news. Don't forget to smash that like button, subscribe, enter our contest. Uh, you know, if you've been watching our channel and you're thinking about subscribing, please go ahead and do it. If you are a subscriber, make sure you guys are clicking that bell notification so you guys get notifications when we post our videos. You know, we post about two videos a day. Sometimes we do three. Trying to pump out as much content for you guys as we can. We appreciate all the engagement with the community. So that was your daily crypto news.